Welcome back to Flatiron's Tuning. We are here in the shop and I wanted to try and answer a common question that we get all the time, which is what AOS is best for my Subaru? What AOS is best for my car? Which is the best AOS for me? Um, we get it a lot because we've made a lot of content uh, through the years talking about AOSs, the Subaru PCB system, how these things all work. Um, so I want to kind of go through the criteria with you that, that we use when we're, when we're talking to somebody. We're going to make a recommendation as far as what is the best application. Uh, just some good things to consider and, and, and all of that. Um, okay, so before we dive into all this, there's a, there's a couple caveats here, which is the first piece of information that you have to have before you can make a good educated choice on which one of these is going to be right for you, is you have to have a sense of how much oil is moving through your PCV system or how much oil you're using in a given interval. And I'm going to define that for the, the case of this video as a 3,000 mile oil change interval or a 20 minute track session because those are those really break down to probably the two most common use cases where you know we're trying to help somebody find uh, an AOS. Um, I would say that what, what we need to know is in that in either one of those use cases are you using more or less than a half a quart of oil in either use case. And, and it's very possible, especially if you have a newer car or a car with a very fresh engine build, that you might not be using much, if any, oil at all. That is very possible and very normal. Um, the amount of oil that you're using is a key piece of information to help you pick uh, which AOS is right because uh, that comes down to the size of the can. What, what is the capacity of, of the AOS that you're adding on? Worth mentioning here because this comes up often as well, hey, why didn't Subaru put an AOS on the car from the beginning? Well, it turns out they did. Um, if you watch our video on how the PCV system works, um, you know, we, we talk about where the factory PCV, or, sorry, where the factory AOS is on the back of the engine. And, and really where it starts to falter is it's, it's a, basically a case of, of how much power you're making, how much power, extra power you're making, what you're doing with the car, how much time you're spending at wide open throttle. Basically, you run into a case where the factory AOS runs out of capacity, and that's where you start to have issues moving oil through the PCV system. So then that's where an AOS can come into play, or a catch can for that matter. I mean, if you're not moving any noticeable oil through the PCV system, you know, a catch can would be certainly a viable option. Really, where, in my opinion, where you would start looking at an AOS instead of a catch can is if when you're moving in one of those use cases, you know, say a quarter quart of oil or more, um, something where you're not going to want to have to get out of the car and drain your catch can between every track session. Um, where if something changes and you start using even more oil, you might overflow a catch can um, or, or something along those lines. So, you know, if you're, you know, if you're not using much oil, the catch can might actually be the right, right option for you versus the AOS. But if you're starting to get into the point where you're using and moving more, more oil through the PCB system than you want, that's where the AOS comes in because these, whatever oil is captured, it drains the oil back to the oiling system. It keeps it in, keeps it in the engine where you need it to be. Um, and, and you know that's that's why these uh, are very helpful. The other caveat I will say at the beginning here is the thing you have to keep in mind with with an aero separator is this is a this is a band aid. This is not a solution. In fact, did a whole other video just on that topic. But you have to keep that in mind. And the reason for that is because we're coming at coming at putting one of these on on a car, thinking it is a solution to this problem, it's really easy to to put it on and you know. And, and just forget about the AOS and think, well, I installed this, the problem is now fixed, I do not have to, to monitor or keep an eye on this thing, but that's not the case. Um, even after you've put on an AOS, you know, presuming it's the, the best option for your application uh, and it should hopefully be working well for you, you've got to kind of keep an eye on it through, through uh, the time. Um, there are some red flags with aerial separators that are they're key indicators that, that you need to go back in and look at the plumbing, look at the, the the AOS that you're using, all those sorts of things. And that red flag is that you're still using oil. You know, so if you're, let's say you're using half a quart of oil and that's what prompts you to pick an aero separator and you install it, and you notice that you're using less oil, but it's still, you know, you're still having to top the oil up between oil changes or, or in between track sessions or whatnot. That's a big indicator that something is off with the plumbing, with, with the, the, the AOS itself, something, something is not working right. Because if the AOS is working properly, you should not be using any oil anymore. The way that these are supposed to work is they capture all of that oil and vapor 
uh, as, it, as it basically go, would go through the PCB system, captures it and returns it to your oiling system. So if you're continuing to use oil, um, that is a big indicator that something is off. And in that case, what you want to do is you want to go in and look at um, and inspect all of the lines that go back to your turbo inlet hose, basically all of the vent tubes for the AOS that you're using, and look for signs of liquid oil moving there. Because if the AOS is functioning properly, you really should not have any oil that's escaping the AOS. If you are running into that, or if you are seeing signs of that, you need to figure out why and, and try and fix that problem. Um, so even if you install an AOS, you still have to be, still have to be vigilant. Um, all right, so with all of that said, let's dive into some of the criteria. So the first criteria that I would say is not a valid one to, to pick an oil, air oil separator is ease of install. And that brings me to this guy here, unfortunately, the Grim Speed air oil separator. Very simple to install. Simply remove your oil cap. This basically replaces your oil cap. You, you run your, your PCB lines to um, basically just to this fitting and, and that's it. Super simple, super easy. But the problem is, is there's, this is just not a very effective design. Um, if you've watched our video on crankcase pressure, you can see um, you know, what we saw as a result of crankcase pressure after installing one of these, and it was actually worse than the factory system. Um, based on you know, what we've seen with customers that are running these just historically, this is not something that I can re recommend. And I definitely would say like ease of install is not, is not a criteria that you want to use to pick one of these. You want to pick one, that is right for your application, has the right capacity, and it's, it's the most functional AOS. So you're going to get the best result and the best improvement for putting it on. So unfortunately, that leaves any kind of oil filter AOS out. Just have not seen any of those that actually really work well at all. And I guess relative to that, if you have the ability to monitor crankcase pressure or if you're putting your car on a dyno where they're checking your crankcase pressure after you've installed an air oil separator, Definitely pay attention to that information. That is another key indicator that whether or not the, the ARL separator is working properly. Um, you want to basically see the same vacuum or, or hopefully neutral condition in the crankcase after you install the AOS as before, um, or hopefully actually if you were having an issue, an improved um, vacuum or, or, or pressure in the crankcase after you install it. But uh, that's something you have to, you'd have to research that after you install it if you have those gauges or somebody doing a Dynatune that's monitoring that. Um, all right, so the next criteria I would say is um, plumbing. You want to look at how these things are plumbed. Ideally, you know, there are two circuits of the factory PCB system. There's the one that comes off of the factory AOS uh, on the top of the block that goes to the rear port on the turbo inlet. And then there's a second circuit that comes from the valve covers up and over to the front port on the turbo inlet. Ideally, you want an aero separator that preserves both of those circuits and doesn't eliminate one. Um, so from that standpoint, the, the radium does eliminate one of those, the killer B does eliminate one of those. I believe the parent one does as well. Um, where that can be an issue is, uh, especially if you are having an issue moving you know, a bit of oil through the, through the uh, PCB system, you're now reducing the engine's ability to breathe in the case that you get into, start getting into positive pressure in the crankcase, which is not ideal. Um, so, uh, you know, losing one of those circuits, you know, reducing the engine's ability to breathe, that might actually reduce the effectiveness of the air oil separator. So that would definitely be a criteria to consider. Um, next, you want to look at the fittings. You know, how does, how does everything go into the can and what is, what is the separation system that is at work in, in these? Um, when you have something like the Perrin or the Killer Bee, these are actually kind of similar in that you have basically an outer can and an inner can. But if you look at the parent uh, AOS, where the fittings go in, it basically hits that wall of the inner can. Killer B gives you a lot more space, um, as it, basically as that air or oil vapor might be working its way into the can. That means it's going to be less restrictive. It's going to, I think, work a little bit better. Um, that makes something like the Killer B a little bit more ideal. Um, we did do a review of the Killer B. We tested this on uh, one of the guys' race cars. Um, close to when it, when it first came out, and we had really good results with this. Um, so, you know, how do, how do the fittings go in? Um, like the radium here, it uses banjo fittings, top and bottom, you know, for the, for the vent and for the drain, but they've got this weird thing where, like, depending on what the center section is, it can end up in a suboptimal position where it's going to pose a little bit of a restriction to either the air coming in or out. That would be something to consider as well. Um, the next consideration is packaging. So, 
The IEG of everything up here, short of the, the Roger Clark here, which we'll get to in a bit, um, is the largest can. So if you want the most capacity, that can be a real advantage, but that also makes the packaging in, in where you install it the most challenging. So especially on a car that's largely stock, that's using a top-mounted intercooler, um, stock location, turbo, and all that, the, the placement of the AOS based on the size can be a challenge, and that brings, it's related to the drain. Um, getting these installed properly so that you have a proper drain uh, configuration for that drain hose is really, really important to these things functioning properly. And so if you have tight engine bay, which is like especially the case on GDs, for instance, say, um, you, a smaller can can be a lot more ideal because um, you have more room to work with, uh, especially when you're, when you're looking at how the thing, how the AOS is going to drain. The consideration there is you know, all of these on, on top here, short of the Roger Clark one, drain back to the top of the factory AOS, so the, the three-quarter inch opening on the top of the block. And where the AOS is installed, or the black bracket where it sits, you have to look at the height of the bottom of the AOS compared to the top of the block where it's draining back to. Because you have to have a constant downward slope of that drain tube to get basically the gravity drain for the AOS back to the engine. If you have any kind of an upward slope or a wave, oil is going to pool in that dip, and that can really prevent uh, proper drainage. The other thing is, especially if you have a car with a top-mounted dinner cooler, you just have a lot going on at the back of the engine, and it's hard to get the drain back to the top of the block. So that's something to be aware of, um, especially in terms of you know, where the AOS is sitting. Um, that's where something like the 3MI oil drain hose comes in. Uh, we've got, you know, we've tested this actually with the killer beam um, AOS, this moves the drain location from the top of the block to merge the AOS drain with the turbo oil drain. So basically, you know, this line, that's where your turbo would drain, and then this is where the AOS drain merges in, and then that's where it goes back to the cylinder head. The advantage of this drain hose is that it, it lowers that drain location by, I think it's three inches on, on you know, all the EJ engines. Um, that's a huge difference, and it shortens the plumbing, makes a much more of a direct shot, and that helps to ensure that your AOS is going to drain properly. Um, if you're if you're seeing if after installing an AOS, if you're seeing any of these issues, one of the the very first thing you want to check is is the plumbing of the drain hose. Is it is it constantly downward slope? Is it um, is it obstructed? Is it pinched? Are there any issues with the drain the drain hose itself? Because if the AOS can't drain then the AOS can't do its job. You're, it's going to in, basically you're turning into a catch can, and in doing so, especially if it's draining back to the fitting on the top of the block, you can not only is the drain being pinched, but now you're also reducing the engine's ability to breathe also. So it can be kind of a double whammy as, as far as a, a failure condition. Um, so that three of my drain hose, for all of the AOSs that it's applicable to, which is IEG, Killer B, and Perrin, it definitely improves the function of any one of those. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, Based on just the, the size and, and the fittings and how they go into the can, I would say that the parent is not ideal unless you have very minimal oil that's, that you see moving through the, um, the PCB system and the small can is ideal for, um, for, for your location for install. Um, like I said, both the parent and the Killer B have basically an outer can and an inner can. And where, what happens with those because their volume is smaller is it, it for if you're moving a bit of oil through the PCB system, it takes less to get to the point where that that outer can fills up to the point where it chokes off the inner can, and then the AOS can't breathe anymore. So, like the Killaby works great on cars that have um, very low to minimal oil consumption. But if you know that you're moving a, a bit of oil through the PCB system, you can run into a, a volume limit with the Killaby AOS. Um, obviously, you know, again, back to the drain hose, you want to make sure that the drain and everything is set up properly, as optimally as possible. All of the plumbing is as optimal as possible to get the best function out of this. But, like, if you know that you're using, say, half a quart of oil in a 20 minute track session, you might actually run, out, run into a capacity issue with the Kilo B AOS and see that, you know, there's signs of oil or oil vapor coming out of the vent hose. There's, you're still, you know, having to top of oil in between sessions, that sort of thing. So the Killer B is great for, for packaging, and it's for, for cars that are not moving much, if any, oil through the PCB system. But if you are moving, if you know that you're moving oil through the PCB system uh, and you need the capacity, that's where the IEG um, AOS is, is probably one of the better options. 
is probably the best option of anything on this table as far as versatility goes. You know, it works really well on EJ engines. Um, as long as you can get the drain worked out, it works good on cars with Tom out of dinner coolers. You know, obviously front mounts are easy. It works well on the FA engines as well. Uh, if you need an arrow separated with the FA engine, um, it's a really good option. And it, the way the IG has designed it now, especially with all the configurations that you can you can basically use with this can. It's very, very, it, it's a, it's very, it's like the Swiss Army knife of AOSs, as long as you can get it to fit. We have the Roger Clark here, so I will just mention it really quickly. The, the problem with the Roger Clark uh, filter, or AOS, and why we don't offer it currently, is because um, basically all of their brackets are designed uh, around right-hand drive cars, so there's no ability to fit this in one of our engine bays currently and plumbing and stuff. Um, this is actually for uh, one of the race cars that we sponsor. So this is actually a, a vent tube, kind of like our, this is the IG AOS off of our Pike Speed car that we used to use. Um, the really interesting thing about this one is that their design uh, drains the oil, if you, if you connect it, drains the oil back to the oil pan. That's again something where it's much easier to do in a right-hand drive car than a left-hand drive car, um, which is again why this is just for right-hand drive cars only. But the really interesting thing about that draining back to the oil pan is that this is the, the only one that drains the oil back uh, below the oil level in the pan. That's so what that means. One of, the, one of the other situations that can occur with an AOS that causes a problem is if you're spending a long time at wide open throttle and you're getting some kind of positive pressure in the crankcase, that can prevent the AOS from draining. So the longer you're at wide open throttle, if the AOS can't drain, you can actually be filling up the AOS. That's where the capacity uh, of the AOS really becomes important. But with the Roger Clark design, because it drains to the oil pan, which is below the oil level, if there's any kind of positive pressure in the crankcase that works its way to the AOS, that can actually push the oil, in this circumstance, into the pan instead of basically causing an issue with, with the drainage. Um, I, really, I really wish that we could get you know, a bracket and a fitment location that would allow for that kind of a drain, and I will, we, we've looked at it, it's not it's not easy with, with our cars, unfortunately, because we've got the turbo on one side and then you know the steering column brake booster on the other, and, and finding a location to put an AOS where you can actually get back down to the oil pan to drain is challenging. Um, but it's a really interesting idea, and I'd love to play around with it if that ever becomes an option. But um, yeah, so those are the options, and that's, that's the best I can do as far as to give you a guide as far as the criteria for which AOS is right, for which application. So hopefully that's helpful. We've got a lot of other content on our website uh, of, you know, to help you pick or help you whittle down and pick the AOS that's gonna be best for you. Uh, but if you've got any more questions, you're always welcome to reach out to us through our live chat on our website, through email, through our Discord, and I will always do the best to make sure you get the right part for your, for your car. So hopefully that's helpful. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for your support as always. And until next time, stay tuned to Flatirons Tuning.